Basic Calculus Part 2, Differentiation. In Part 1, we did differentiation from first principles. Now we're going to go on to the Foster method of differentiation. Here's the example from first principles. Just to convince you that those were the answers. Now we're going to have a look at some patterns. We're going to write the exponents of each of the x terms. In other words, that x term will be x to the 0. Like that. Negative exponent for x squared below. And I'll put a 1 there. You'll see why. Now, let's have a look at these ones and do the same with them. Now, let's do some comparisons. There's the original. There's the derivative. 1. 1 goes to 0, 0, don't worry about anything here because it's 0. So the exponent and the number there seem to match. And the number there is one less than that one. That matches with that one. Well, maybe coincidence, let's look at the next one. So we're putting the derivative below the original. That number matches. That number matches, that number matches. One lower, one lower, doesn't matter here. Same thing happened there, number matched, one lower. Let's look at the next one. One lower again, uh, number matches, remember, match, 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 matched, matched. And one lower, yes, one lower, one lower, one lower, yes, so it seems to be a pattern. Negative two, match there, one lower, because one lower than negative two is negative three. Let's do the same ourselves here. Here are some reminders of what happens, so two x to the 2x plus 3, 2x to the 1 becomes 2x to the north. ax plus b becomes ax to the, AX to the north, which is just a. 3x squared becomes 2 times 3x to the 1. So there's something about this multiplying down that going one lower. So do all these for these ones. So there's a pattern, and that gives rise to our first rule of differentiation, which says that if we f of x equals x to the n, then the derivative x prime x, n multiplies x to the, and drop by 1, nx to the n minus 1, 9x to the 9 minus 1, negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 1. Which then, that negative 3, x negative 3, we write below its mathematical neatness. You usually expect it to do that, to write with positive exponents. We cannot differentiate with it there. We must write it above. x to the minus 4. Now we apply the pattern. Negative 4x to the negative 4 minus 1. positive exponent. Square root of x as an exponent. We cannot differentiate that as it stands. x to the half. Now we can do it. Half multiplies down. We subtract one off the half. 
giving you that. Now that can be written as x to the half with the 2, so it's 1 over 2x to the half, or 1 over twice the square root of x, which is x to the half. Either is okay. f of x equals c, a constant. Remember that means cx to the 0, the 0 multiplies down, and the derivative is 0. f prime x is 0. So therefore, if f of x equals 4, f prime x equals 0. Next rule. The only difference is now we've added a coefficient to x to the n, but the same thing happens where the n multiplied down and we drop that by 1. The n's going to multiply down and we drop that by 1. Same thing. But we can do a multiplication now. So 5 times 3, x to the 5 minus 1. 15x to the 4. Negative 12x to the negative 4. Multiply, subtract 1. Which we write with positive exponents. You cannot differentiate that as it is. Just keep that in mind. You, have, you cannot differentiate a denominator and numerator separately. You have to have everything as something on top, as a numerator, no denominator. So 5x to the minus 6. Minus 30x to the minus 7. Notice not minus 5. We're subtracting 1 of negative 6, giving us negative 7. And we take the x to negative 7 down to become x to the 7. Ah, square root of x, x to the half, so underneath becomes x to the negative a half. Subtract 1, which gives you negative 3 over 2, or negative 1 and a half. That now goes below as x to the 3 over 2, or the square root of x cubed. Exercise for you to try yourself. Constant, therefore derivative, 0. That's a constant, so derivative, 0. In this case, it's more just the differentiation, so I'm not taking them below, but notice you will need to write that as negative 2 over x cubed in an exam situation. Cannot differentiate until you write that as 7x to the minus 1. Same applies there. Negative 5x to the minus 4. Now you can differentiate. Half minus 1, negative half. Cannot differentiate that like that. Have to write it as 12x to the half. Now you can differentiate. Over the square root of x means x to the negative half. Negative half times 2, negative 1, so it's negative x to the subtract 1, negative 3 over 2. Which means you'll end up with negative 1 over x to the 3 over 2. 2 thirds times x, 4. Subtract 1 of 2 thirds, negative 1 third. Cannot differentiate like that. Cube root of x, x to the 1 third. Fourth root of x is x to the quarter. Bring it up with a negative exponent. Square root of x cubed, x to the 3 over 2. Further rules. 
derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. Derivative of a difference is equal to the difference of the derivatives. There's a sum. Now, if we're going to differentiate that, we have to differentiate that, but we can differentiate, differentiate. Notice if this was a multiplying, we can't, but we're going to come on to that. But we can if they're adding. Differentiate each. So that's x to the quarter, and this is 4 thirds x to the minus 3. Now be very careful, because lots of people leave it like that, thinking they're differentiated. It's a careless error in exams especially. You've just written that in a differentiable form. You haven't differentiated yet. Now we differentiate. Quarter multiplies down 3x to the quarter minus 1. Negative 3 multiplies down 4 over 3 to the negative 3 minus 1. Simplifies to there. Now we write that below with the 4, 4x four to the 3 quarters, or you write 4 times the 4th root of x cubed, like that. And that x to the 4 goes below, 4 stays above. The derivative of a product is not equal to the product of the derivatives. If you have that, you cannot differentiate, differentiate. It just does not work. The derivative of a quotient is not equal to the quotient of the derivatives. So if you have that over that, you can't differentiate, differentiate it. Not equal. But what we do is, we'll take them and we'll expand it first. 6 threes are 18, 5 plus 2 is 7. Same base, you can add the exponents. Now we differentiate it. Multiply the brackets out first. You can't differentiate each bracket separately when they're multiplying. Now we can differentiate it. Square out the bracket first. Differentiate. Complete the division, then differentiate. If you can't complete the division, then that's where it stops. There are more complex ways to do it, which are not done in this basic calculus course. So this one here, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and we subtract the exponents, 2x to the 3. Now we can differentiate. There are three terms above, one below. We cannot differentiate. But because there's one below, we can write each of those three terms over the x. Like that. Means the same thing. It means that divided by x, which means each of these is divided by x. Now we simplify each of those, and now we can differentiate. That goes, it's constant. There we are. And we must write with positive exponent 5 over x squared. That one's a problem. We can't do that. We can't write 2x over 3x, 1 over 2. We, can't, we can write 2x over 3x plus 2 minus 1 over 3x plus 2. But it's not going to help. Because there's still two terms below. You cannot differentiate a denominator. Can't be done without more complex calculus. Not done in this basic calculus course. That one there can be done because the top line factorizes. X plus 1's go. We haven't differentiated yet. Now we can differentiate though. Very simple one. Just 3. This one can be done because there is a single term. There's a monomial for single term polynomial. Well, it's not really a polynomial, but it's a single term expression. We can write each over the square root of x. We'll have to write square root of x as x to the half. And 1 minus half is half. 0 minus half is negative a half. Now we can differentiate. 
and then right back with positive exponents or in square root signs again. That 2 is below, so it'll go with the x to the half or the square root of x. There we are. Same as that 2 there. Some practice. First one straightforward. Multiply out first, then you can differentiate. Multiply, differentiate. Multiply, differentiate. Square out first, differentiate. Multiply out first. For those who remember their grade 10 maths, that is a difference of cubes, but you can just multiply it out by long multiplication of brackets. And we differentiate. So something like that goes all the way down to that. Write as separate fractions. That over x, that over x, which then becomes 4 plus 7x to the minus 1. Now we can differentiate. And we write with positive exponents. This one here is fun, but we must multiply out the top first, then write out separate fractions. So there we are. Now we're going to say that over 2x, that over 2x, that over 2x. There it is there, it becomes that. And 2 over x, 2x to the minus 1. Then we differentiate it. The 2 goes. x over 2 becomes half, because that's half x. 2x to the minus 1 becomes minus 2x to the minus 2. Write with positive exponent. That one it can factorize. So you get x plus 5, differentiating 1. This one here, we can write as separate fractions and simplify. No x's in the denominator. Now we can differentiate and then write back with positive exponents. The x to the half goes with the 2. x to the minus 3 over 2 becomes x to the 3 over 2 with the 2. Factorize. Now, simple differentiation. Write as separate fractions. Simplify. Differentiate. Positive exponents. Notations for the derivative. There are different ways that we can say the derivative. f prime of x. We've done that already. Depending on the function. h prime, g prime. We can write it like this as well now. This says derivative of y with respect to x. We say dy by dx. Not dy over dx. It's like dy divided by dx dy by dx. So y equals originally, and with this got x's in it, we differentiate the x's. Derivative of y with respect to x. So if y equals that, then dy by dx is the derivative of that. We can write it this way. With, instead of saying dy by dx where y equals, we can say d by dx of that. Derivative, derivative of that with respect to x. So that just saves us writing y equals. Now find dy by dx. It's just d of that by dx. There we are. And we differentiate it. And another form. Derivative with respect to x of that bracket. In other words, differentiate the x's inside there. So differentiate the x's inside there. Differentiate. 
d by dt of f of t if f of t equals that. Well, that just means differentiate with respect to t. So we must multiply it out first. Now we differentiate. d by dA of 1 over A, well, that says differentiate 1 over A with respect to Kx. Remember, first thing we need to do, A to the minus 1. We haven't differentiated yet. Now we can differentiate minus A to the minus 2 and write with positive exponents. Five root h, five h to the half. Now we differentiate it. Right with positive exponents, you could have written h to the half below. This is interesting sitting there. There it is there. d by dx of dy by dx if y equals that. Now do you see what's happening here is we need dy by dx, so we must differentiate. Then we have to differentiate again. So I'm just going to use a different notation. Derivative with respect to x. Where did that come from? Ah, that there is dy by dx. y equals that. dy by dx will be minus 8x to the minus 2. So all I've done is I'm putting the derivative inside. Now we differentiate. Positive exponent. Second derivative. Sometimes written as that there. Notice the 2 on the d and the 2 on the x. d2y by dx squared. Strange just mathematicians, but d2y by dx squared. Or f prime prime of x, f double prime of x. Usually we say f prime prime x. An exercise to do. Pause, try it yourself. This just says differentiate g of t, so I've done it. Positive exponent. Differentiate this with respect to v. There we are. And a positive exponent. Multiply out first. So you notice we still have d by du of that. We've multiplied it out. Which becomes that. Now we can differentiate it. Minus 2u. That, that becomes 1. And we write with positive exponent. We've written all those with R's in the denominator. Now we can differentiate. And back to positive exponents. This is weird, but you know, root 2, when we subtract 1 of root 2, we get root 2 minus 1. So dh of theta by d theta, if h of theta equals that, just says differentiate h of theta with respect to theta. So there's h of theta. So root 2 multiplies down theta, and we subtract 1. Plus 1. Derivative of theta by d theta is 1. And plus root 2 theta, we subtract 1. That's positive. That's negative. So I'll write that as that. d by dx of dy by dx. So I must find dy by dx. I'm still finding its derivative. Instead of dy by dx, I've written the derivative of that. Now we differentiate again. dy by dx, if y equals that, well, we need to write that as separate fractions. 
Now we can differentiate. And positive exponents. Derivative with respect to x of f of x. This isn't a double derivative. Hey? f of x equals that. It says differentiate. I need to write that as x to the half. I need to separate these. Be careful. That change of sign. Now it becomes plus. That's like a bracket as well. Now we differentiate. Minus 1 is gone. Positive exponents. X minus half above goes below, joins the two. 